Now, uh, today we're we're reading that the um, Manchester United Museum in Old Trafford has put a call out for anyone with memorabilia of George Best. They have, I think, been embarrassed into this by the family of George Best, who are... Um, Uh, Pretty appalled, really, that such a massive, massive star and figure in the history of Old Trafford would um, not be honoured appropriately in the museum, um, the Man United Museum. We wanted to talk to some people here who, you know, may may have uh, some memorabilia uh, tucked away in their homes in the attic, maybe even. Uh, Jim, Jim Gray, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, Katie, how are you? Jim, you met George Best. I did indeed. I met him twice. Uh, once as a very young child myself uh, at Dublin Airport. And then as an adult, about 25 years ago, I met him in a bar in Kilkenny. And I have an unusual piece of memorabilia. I'm sure some people might think it's a ridiculous piece of memorabilia, but to me it's a, it's a very precious item. It's a, a wine glass uh, from which George sipped quite a large volume of wine that evening in my company uh, and we spent a few hours chatting about his golden career and all of that and at the end of the evening I had my young daughter with me uh, because it was a, a, a it, well it was originally meant to be a kind of a public talk by George about his career and that so I brought okay. my young daughter okay. along with me she was a Man United fan OK just OK we start at the start of it then because yeah. that sounds like a right. good story uh, Jim <laughs> yeah. so what, what, when are we, what year are we talking about now would this have been I think it was 1998 from memory so it would have been 25 years ago so George was kind of well long since retired and he was in the the sort of the cabaret stage of his career, if you like, where he was he was doing a lot of public after dinner speaking and uh, events like that. Okay. So I'm from Sligo, as as it happens, but we were in Kilkenny for a few days, uh, and I just happened to notice a, a, a notice in the uh, front window of Langton's Pub in Kilkenny. I'm sure many of your um, listeners will be familiar well, with it. I know it well, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was surprised, it, 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 it was this evening, George Best will be here this evening, and it was a fiver to get in. And I, I, I thought it was really unusual that, you know, that it, it was such short notice. Uh, and I initially thought maybe this is some sort of a joke or something, you know, George Best in a pub in Kilkenny. But anyway, myself and my young daughter, as I say, who was a, a Mad Man United fan, Lisa, at the time, we went down very excited uh, to, to go in and listen to Georgie. But when we arrived, there were very few people there as it happened. Now, maybe it was because of the short notice. Maybe it hadn't been properly advertised. Uh, maybe it was because, you know, as we all know, Kilkenny is a, a mad hurling centre rather than a, a football. I'm not sure wh- what the reason was, but there were less than a dozen people present anyway. Yeah. So we were hanging around and... Uh, Eventually, it was announced that, you know, because of the small attendance, we, we each got a fiver back, and it was announced that George wouldn't be doing the talk. And we were naturally a bit disappointed. But then they said, look, he's out in the front bar having a quiet drink. Uh, if you want to join him, I'm sure there'd be no problem. So out we went. Uh, a number of people went out into the bar, including myself and my daughter. And George was sitting there with his wife, Alex, and he was in the company of another former Man United legend, uh, Shea Brennan, who played for the Republic of Ireland for many years as well, and who had uh, played alongside Georgie when they won the when United won the European Cup in 1968. So Shea Brennan was there mm. with his wife. You know, Shea was living in Waterford at the time, and I can only assume that that may be the reason they were in Kilkenny, because, you know, it's a short hop over from Waterford. Maybe George was spending a few days with Shea or something, whatever the reason, anyway. Mm-hmm. The four of them were there, and... Um, we sat down into their company, myself and my daughter, and chatted away, you know, as like next door neighbours almost. There were no minders. There was none of this kind of false sort of barrier between the superstar and the fan. It was just people having a chat. And he what, chatted what, away. He was a bit what, shy. What were we chatting about? Yeah. Like, what was the... All his, all his career, his football. Like, I had been a mad Man United, but particularly George Best fan since I was a child. Uh, and I had a vivid memory of all the great goals he scored and all of that. And so that's what it was, just asking him stuff about his career. And he chatted away very pleasantly, very courteous man, I must say. Charming man, quite shy. You know, he wasn't 
putting himself forward as, uh, you know, here I am, talk to me and I'll, I'll tell you how great I am. It wasn't that sort of an attitude at all. It was just friendly, but, informal chat. But you must, Jim, you must have thought you died and went to heaven. I mean, like oh, a, a yeah, super fan and, and landing yeah. in that scenario. Landing in that. It was unbelievable. Um, you know, I, I, as I say, I had met George when I was a young boy myself. Uh, United, when they won the European Cup in 68, they came over to Dublin to play a pre-season friendly for the following. So it would have been late summer, I'd say, of 1968. And my dad took myself and my brother, my twin brother, to see United play in Dublin. I think it was against Trump Condra. Now, some of your listeners of a, a certain age might, might be able to confirm that. But I think it was against Trump Condra, and I think it was in Talca Park. But anyway, the next day, uh, my father, who was a great football man himself, had worked out that United would be flying back to Manchester from Dublin Airport on the Monday morning. So out we went to the airport, and sure enough, there was um, the United lads. And again, no security like there would be these days. You know, no, no private lounges or anything. They were they were around uh, freely, and we went up and chatted away to George Best. And I remember, believe it or not, this is a memory that stuck with me for years. Now, I was only a young lad at the time, and Best would have been in his prime, maybe 22, 23 years old at this time, probably mm-hmm. the biggest football star on the planet at that time. For and sure, I went up and asked sure, him for his yeah. autograph. Really shyly and, you know, timidly, I said, can I have your autograph? And I remember distinctly him saying to me, you're forgetting a very important word. And I said, well, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that happened, and he he signed the autograph. Did you tell so, him that story uh, the night in Langtons? Then I did, I did. But uh, now look, there were I wasn't the only one in this company, as you can imagine. Um, when word filtered around, like the people who weren't willing to pay the five were to go and listen to him. But when word filtered around the town that George Best was having a drink in Langtons, it, it fairly quickly filled up. Uh, so yeah, but I did, I did tell him that story about the airport. All right, yeah. This, uh, again, now you mentioned the drink there, but uh, obviously we all know uh, what George uh, Bess Achilles heel was. That would have been yeah. pre the, the liver transplant, would it? Or would have been before that? I think that so, yeah. Up, yeah. He, I have a photograph of myself and himself taken on the night, and he was quite rotund. Uh, he had a grey beard. But still, you know, it's still very recognisable as the famous George Best. Do you know what I mean? He, mm-hmm. he was in that era of... He died in 2005, so how many years would that have been previously, you know? But yeah, yeah he was in good, he was in good health. And while there was excitement, and as you were saying earlier, Katie, about sort of, you know, died and gone to heaven, there was huge excitement about meeting this, this boyhood hero. But there was a little bit of sadness attached to it as well, to see what he had become uh, in that, you know, here he was, as I said, probably the greatest football of his genera- footballer of his generation. And he was kind of doing the rounds you know, as as this self-deprecating cabaret act, um, almost mocking himself. It was shortly after the appearance, people will remember this infamous appearance on the Terry Wogan show, where he appeared uh, quite drunk on the show. Uh, yeah. And so it was that era, and there was a certain sadness to see what he'd become, to the point where people weren't willing to pay a fiver to go I, in and listen to him. You know? Sorry, that's what struck me about it, that even yeah. at that stage, as you say, I mean, really one of the great, great figures of football yeah. in the world, on the planet, and that Absolutely. he couldn't, couldn't, uh, you couldn't get more than more than a dozen people to, to part yeah. with a fiver yeah. to be in his company. That was, so yeah. it must have been, I, even, on, even the circumstances of you meeting him then, like he, he obviously would have been told this, sorry, we can't actually fill, fill uh, the, back, the back room of the bar for you. Uh, you yeah. know, it, 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 that must have been enough, tough. It, 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 it bothered me and maybe others, I'd say, more than it bothered him. He didn't seem... Th- there was no great self-awareness about him, I don't think, ever. I don't, I don't think he ever really knew how good he was uh, or how loved he was. Um, and so he didn't seem to be bothered at all by the fact that nobody was willing to pay the fiver. He, he just took it in and sat in with his mate and had a, a quiet drink. It was just, a, 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 you know, T- tell I don't me about, think... He, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was going go to say, Jim, tell me about the glass then. How did you end up with the wine glass at the end of it all? Well, we, we were, as I said, we were in his company for maybe an hour or two um, and he had a, a bottle of wine was on the table uh, and I, I presume more than one bottle of wine was brought out as the evening progressed, but I, I haven't a, a vivid memory of that. But I know there was this bottle of white wine from which he was 
continuously topping up his glass and, and that of his wife. Uh, Shea Brennan, as I said, was having the pint of Guinness uh, and George and his, his wife Alex were drinking wine. And just when we were leaving, um, I, he was still there when we were leaving and I just, it, the glass was empty at this stage and I just said to him, would you mind, George, if I took this glass with me? And he, he sort of was surprised and maybe was laughing a bit at, at the notion of it and he said, are you, are you serious? Uh, and, I, and I said, yeah, yeah, I'd love to have it. So he gave it to my daughter, actually. He handed it to my daughter. And he said, maybe you should ask the barman because it's his glass, not mine. Uh, and I said, yeah, grand, thanks. And uh, we didn't ask anybody. We just went home with it. <laughs> we just went home with the glass. Uh, and I still have it. So, so you uh, have... With George Best DNA. You have it, yeah. George Best DNA in your house. That's what yeah, you have. Yeah, I have. And proud to have it. As I say, to some people that might sound a ridiculous notion. But to me, and, and coming from a position, as we were talking earlier, whereby, you know, I grew up in the 60s and it was the Beatles and George with his long flowing black hair. He was like the fifth Beatle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was just magic on a football pitch. He's the reason that I loved football was George Best, you know. And so to have that for me is something really special. And the United Museum won't be getting it, by the way, Katie. <laughs> right. Where do you keep it? <laughs> In a, a glass, a, a glass case here in my main uh, sitting room. It's up there. So you have a little shrine, a little place, shrine to George, yeah. uh, like a little shrine to George. Yeah, and it's to, I have two, two, two autographs. One from uh, that '68 meeting at Dublin Airport, and one from Langton. And I have the photograph of myself and himself in in Langton. So yeah. Lovely. Right. It's lovely. And this is a bit of a treat for you now, Jim. We have, I think, if I'm right, a clip of George being interviewed by Noel Edmonds a bit before that meeting in Langtas. This is in, from 1984. Lance Percival set the scene rather nicely, May 1963. But why was it the time of your life? Well, the thing was, I'd been uh, in Manchester since I was 15, as uh, you know, I left home in Belfast. And I'd gone through a sort of an apprenticeship period. I'd just had my 17th birthday. And that's when, uh, you know, the club usually decide whether to sign a player full-time professional. Mm. Of course, leading up to the cup final, they obviously had other things in their mind. So uh, at the time, I didn't really know whether I was going to stay at Manchester United or uh, whether I was going to go home to Belfast. And of course, it was a very important time for Manchester United. It was was still getting over the effects of Munich. Yeah, it was really. It was the start of some great years. Uh, The the air crash obviously had taken away some tremendously great players from a great club side. And uh, Manchester United had become, uh, in those days, if they weren't your team or the team that you supported, they were everyone's sort of second favourite team. Mm. And uh, this really was the start of some tremendous years for them. So it was very important. And that was Jim. That was great. Lovely to hear him. Yeah. Uh, that's lovely when he was... That little, that lovely, soft, fast accent. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, referring there to the Munich air disaster, uh, that yeah. was 1958, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, 58, yeah. Um. Uh, which, of course, uh, as as uh, Noel Edmonds was saying there, Man United were still recovering from at the time that George was coming coming of age and co- yeah. coming on board. Yeah, George made his debut. 